What's going on guys? So this has got to be one of the busiest factory floors I have been on. I am currently in Middlebury, Indiana at the Forest River Catalina factory. And we are seeing Catalina RVs being built in real time. Now, I have a guest with me who is gonna give me a great overview explanation at the difference between Catalina and some of the units they compete against, as well as some of the practices they use to assemble their RVs. Hang tight, I'll be right back. Okay, so I got my new good friend, Mike Getter, in front of me. How are you doing? Doing pretty well. Great, Appreciate you wanna introduce you. yourself real quick? Yeah, I'm Mike Getter, I'm general manager for Coachman Catalina. I've actually been with Coachman Catalina for about 15 years now. I started as a trainee once upon a time and uh, been with the uh, same group, same division my whole career. Very good. And I appreciate you having me out here. They have a lot of new floor plans, some new stuff that they've given me an opportunity to film. And you know what? I could have just filmed all that stuff and headed to the airport and taken off. But I felt this was going to be a really good conversation to have about Catalina, how you guys build things, how you guys do things, and how some of what you do is a little different. Okay, so we are in the Catalina factory. We are one of the four Catalina factories. We are looking at a frame that's been brought in. This is the raw frame, how it's ordered and it's delivered to them. So you mentioned you use BAL frames. Yep. This is called the NXG frame, I believe. Yep. So this is the NXG frame from them. There's a lot of perks that, uh, that BAL claims that their frame has. And I'm gonna let you kind of go over them because I know that they've probably told you all about their frames. That they have. So a couple of the key ones I'll point out is that BAL largely uses huck bolts and places welds across most of their units, which is the same thing that's on an airplane, the same thing that's on a freight car. Um, you know, so when you're talking about the strength of the frame on these part or parts, your outriggers, versus a weld. In addition to that, you know, you have certain components like on your A-frame, your rear bumper, your outriggers, that they go through a powder coating process and each piece is individually painted. But in addition to that, they also go through an E-coating process. So it's double coated in the areas where it's actively exposed to the elements. Um, you know, one of the other key parts with BAL uh, is in their frame design itself with these, I guess we call them Z rails. We're also go going to pick up some weight savings in the frame. One of my favorite parts about since we had switched to BAL is uh, every part is CNC cut, engineered, individually painted. So instead of actively cutting, welding online and assembling as one piece, each piece is modular modular yeah. and the same exact every time okay so one thing that's interesting about this frame as well is that you can tell the modularity between it so this is a section then it was bolted to this section and this section goes to here and it's bolted to another section which continues all the way on to the end and this gives them the capability of really customizing the frame however they want right and this is what i would consider to be an engineered frame now i know when we talk about Lippert frames, those are also engineered frames, but this is engineered in a different way because technically the material is actually a little thinner. It's a lighter gauge material, but it's engineered to be as strong through how it's actually designed, how it's actually constructed and built. So you said weight savings. And weight savings, there's only a couple ways to achieve weight savings, right? Thinner material, less material, lighter weight material, or you have to really focus on what you can eliminate. And I don't think you're trying to eliminate anything. I think the goal ultimately is, is to get a frame that is lightweight, but super strong and engineered properly. And that's kind of the key behind this product here is that they've engineered the frame specifically for their use. Now you guys used to use Lippert frames. Correct. And a lot of the industry still does, but you switched specifically to BAL. Have you seen a reduction in warranty related issues? Have you seen a reduction in problems? It's almost entirely eliminated any rust issues we experience out in the field. We build year round, we are in Northern Indiana. These things are gonna go through snow and salt. So having that extra E-code on the unit has largely eliminated a lot of the rust issue we experience. Still recommend washing your frames, uh, you know, time oh, yeah. to time. Okay, now I'm gonna ask you a, a hard question to answer because you might have to base this off of memory, but wait. 
So if we look at this frame right here, I have no idea what floor plan this is going to be. I have a ma I imagine this is going to be a front bedroom, living room, uh, mid slide, slide bunk and bunkhouse in the back. So yep. bunkhouse unit. Weight saving. So if you compare this frame in terms of weight to the Lippert frame that you previously would have had for this floor plan, do you know approximately the difference in weight between the I two? I would say we're probably averaging 100 to 200 pounds per model. This one being a larger triple slide will be on that upper end of this. Okay. Um, so that would be my rough estimate. Don't quote me on it. Okay. Uh, Cause it has been a little while, but. But it is lighter. It's Correct. significantly lighter. Yep. And how much would you say a typical frame would weigh on average, something like this, just so people kind of have a general idea. You're probably every bit of a couple, 1,500, 2,000 pounds. Okay, all right. Now, the next question I have is related to structure. So as you put the floor on, as you build the sidewall, so every fifth wheel manufacturer I've talked to has said the structure of the house itself is integral to the overall structure of the frame and the body. As you add the floor, the sidewalls, the front cap, the back cap, and the roof, that's really what creates the rigid structure that an RV needs so you can put furniture or things like that inside and it's not just tearing itself apart. So is that the same with these frames? I can imagine it is, that yeah. the house structure is, is a very important part of the overall structure of the frame. Absolutely, and they all tie together, you know, when it goes through engineering, you know, when you look at that LVL and how energy gets transferred as it's going down the road, it's important to have that integrity. I mean, starting with your frame, going all the way through your roof. And if you look at, you know, those sidewalls, even doing the hurricane straps on every uh, attachment piece that you saw back there, you know, just adding integrity across each layer uh, builds to the overall quality of the unit. You know, adhesion based, all these studs, we'll put adhesion on as you know, our primary, but then also do mechanical fasteners. Everything's on a jig for consistency of build. Well, that's that's two by six lumber you have there too. Yep. Yeah, I think a lot of people, when you see stick and tin, you assume it's all this. But two by six, two by six, two by six. LVL. Yeah, this is crazy right here. So a lot of people don't know what they're looking at. You think that's a two by six. That's not. That's a plywood. Check that out. So there's a lot of structure, and I would I would venture to say, and I can't quantify this, but if you were to overload the roof structure of an RV, this roof would probably this whole sidewall and roof structure would be stronger than a typical aluminum framed Absolutely. laminated wall. I mean, Absolutely. just check it out. I think most people could look at this and say that's probably more structural than the typical aluminum framing you see on RVs. So aluminum is typically about weight savings. Correct. When you go with this, you sacrifice some of that weight savings. You go to a slightly lower cost and you arguably get more structure, which is kind of crazy. I like the 16 inch on centers. I like the fact that there's not an insignificant amount of lumber that goes into one of these. It's not as if, like you see with some laminated sidewalls, you see very little aluminum framing only in certain areas. But on the stick and tin, you see that they're framed very similar, like you said, to residential construction. So I think a lot of people have a perception that when you buy stick and tin, you're buying something that's weaker or that is less structural. But I think that that's probably the opposite. You're buying something that's heavier. You're using lumber, which the good thing is, is when you use aluminum, you put lumber inside of the aluminum for nails and screws to bite into. But when you're using lumber as your main, main material, everything bites into it, right? Yep. And like, we're looking at the truss system right here, which is an example of where you continue to use lumber. And a lot of RV manufacturers who build laminated units even use a wood truss system for their roof. So I get it, I get, I get what you're doing. And, and again, you guys are doing a great job adding content. You wanna talk about what you guys have done where a lot of manufacturers have decontented their unit, you guys have continued to add content to you. Yeah, so if you look at the last year, you know, as there has been a big drive to get price down, uh, we really focused on feature content in our units and what are the very customer friendly features that can make the experience better. You know, one of those key ones uh, has been the BAL auto level system, you know, where it takes out one of the frustrations once you get into the campsite, you're ready to enjoy leveling of a unit can be a pain uh so we added that feature in you know this past year we went into here from the south 
you know, added in AAA scene features. Uh, we upgraded our furniture instead of just the standard jackknife. Uh, in most of our models, now it's a standard bifold with optional theater seating. Uh, so across the unit, we tried to find different ways to add value uh, without significantly driving up price. And, you know, we think we did a good job and we're experiencing a big growth year right now. Yep. All right, so we can see where the frame has gotten its wheels, tires, axles, everything on there. And it moves here. protect the bumper going down line. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And this is a 12 inch beam right here. And he says Z because it's in the shape of a Z. It's not an I and it's not a C. It goes in, down, and then out this way. And you can see how it's flanged down here and it's flanged up here. And all of that engineering creates rigidity and structure. Then you can see similar to around your plumbing uh, at a home, we have expanding foam that seals off on your underbelly here, protects your water lines, water tanks, also creates a layer of dead air. We talked about it earlier this day, which adds an insulating factor on there. You know, one question that, that Mike, I'm sure, is always trying to know the answer to as an OEM manufacturer is, you know, when a dealership comes in and wants to buy units from you to stock their yard, they're hopefully buying units that people want to buy. They're not just buying units that they want to buy to stock the yard. And I always want to ask my subscribers, do you want to see things like upgraded suspension, heavy duty shackle straps, greasable wet bolts, Goodyear tires? Are these important to the, the, the customer more so than the price? And what I mean by that is naturally, when you add stuff like that, it's called content. When you add that content, the price of manufacturing the RV is gonna go up. It's just economics. Yep. If you take that stuff off, of course, the price goes down. The dealerships who buy these units, they have a choice. They could go to you and say, I want this stuff on the RV, and you'll put it on the RV for them. But it all comes down to the consumer actually wanting to buy those RVs. So the question is, and leave a comment below, because I'm sure Mike and team are gonna watch these videos, is do you want to see more content even if it means a unit like this let's just say a bunkhouse unit because i can see the slide outs here let's say this bunkhouse unit hypothetically has an msrp of fifty five thousand dollars we all know that the sales price is significantly lower than that what, what they sell it for but if it had an msrp of fifty three thousand dollars but that got you an upgraded suspension it got you heavier duty shackle hangers it got you upgraded this or that, or things that you typically would want maybe after the sale, would you pay it initially at the front end? Because that's a question that dealerships yeah. need to know, and it's a question you need to know. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, the consumer is what's dictating what the dealer buys, and the dealer buys from you. Yep, which right? dictates you know, what we manufacture, what price points we're comfortable being in you know, for our dealers. So you know, that feedback at the end of the day will drive the product development side of our business, um, you know, and pointing out to the axles, you know, independent suspension, you know, it is a somewhat costly adder and it's something we've been weighing and trying to figure out, you know, should we make that jump into that? Is it something that can be a must have for a cut consumer? Um, so any feedback you guys have would be greatly appreciated. And I was about to ask that. So here is your opportunity, Mike, to ask, a lot of people who are looking to buy an RV, who own and possibly looking to buy a new RV, what you want to ask them. So what are some questions that you would love to ask the consumer that you never really get an opportunity to ask them? Well, ind independent suspension would be one. Uh, you know, what are you guys hoping for from an interior look perspective? Um, do you guys have any desire on a central vac system? You know, inside the boating industry, right? When you get into cabin cruisers, it's a very com common feature. RVs, it really isn't until we get into some of the bigger stuff. So on a product like mine, you know, does that hold appeal for you guys? Um, you know, is there kitchen appliances that we're not currently putting in as a standard that would be beneficial for you? Is a small dishwasher something that should be incorporated into most units? Um, Dual pane windows. Yeah, dual pane windows. We talked about yeah. that earlier today. You know, is that something that's worth that price point jumping up five hundred or a thousand dollars? You know, know, one thing you mentioned, and and he mentioned it to me. He didn't mention it to you all, by the way, is the fact that 
when we talked about the RV Star program and we talked about continuously improving quality durability, he had mentioned a few things when we walked through some units, such as using more construction grade adhesives as opposed to nails that'll back themselves out and fall out eventually, right? So you wanna talk about that a little bit and some of the focuses around quality as well? Yeah, so over the last couple of years, uh, we've had a huge opportunity coming out of COVID to continue to dial some stuff in. And during that time, you know, our goal is just to get product in, build, build it as good as we can, uh, but we didn't have that improvement process that's usually ongoing during a development cycle. So coming out of that, uh, one of the new manufacturers actually moved to a lot of adhesion based and anytime someone new comes in, they always bring some great stuff with them and, you know, take our fascia as the easy to point to example. You know, if you go back to a Catalina four years ago, you're going to see 30 pinholes in each corner where we're tacking it up and then we run the staple gun or nail gun all the way down the fascia. Uh, we've moved that to largely adhesion based. And believe it or not, that actually has a better holding power, uh, which was news to me, than mm -hmm. a mechanical fastener. Um, and now we're incorporating that in other areas. You know, when you walked by the sidewalls, you would have seen some glue on that before the, the insulation's in there. So we'll actually run glue on every single one of those studs as we put down the panels. Um, and throughout the unit, we're adding more and more adhesion to add structural mm -hmm. integrity. Well, you even mentioned your, uh, your Luan wall on the inside, how the, the wrap on it, right? Is that something you want to talk yeah, about Yeah, we moved to a PUR glue. I think, you know, our existing customers, um, there are some out there that have experienced a panel failure, especially in hot and dry climates. And it happened after the big freeze down in Texas, the vendor that supplied our wall panels uh, with glue started shortcutting their polymers a little bit and we had in certain temperatures climates panels delaminating so we are paying significantly more per panel but we actually do a PUR based glue um, that has a much stronger adhesion much higher temperature fail point uh, if it ever gets to that temperature in the unit we had a whole other host issues mm -hmm. that aren't related to RVs. Yep. So that, that's a good thing to mention because again, when you think about continuous improvement, a lot of people will say in response to what you're saying, they're like, I just want a better built RV. And you're telling me and you're telling them that you're constantly looking at problems people have. Um, it, those are the things that I think people want to really see as well. They want to see that you're focused in on bundling wires and, and routing them in ways that they're just not haphazardly everywhere. And I actually see that you are bundling wires. You know, some manufacturers literally just lay them all across. And this is an area that takes a little bit more time. Correct. And this is proof to the industry that it can be done because you are probably one of the highest production RV manufacturers in the industry. Correct. You yep. build more units than a lot of other manufacturers combined, I'm sure. And if you can find ways to improve what you do, the entire industry can find ways to improve what they do, right? I like what you mentioned, nobody's perfect. You're never gonna build a perfect product because that would just, that would uh, void out what we know about mankind, <laughs> that we are not yeah. perfect people. But we can always improve. We can always try to catch pro problems and, and try to resolve them. I know people think I talk way too much and I'm probably talking way too much. But um, I know I appreciate having you on. Is there any final thing you'd like to mention? No, just, you know, to our existing customers out there, uh, thank you, you know, um, any prospect is, prospective customers uh, would love the opportunity to earn your business um, you know and I hope even if it isn't us that you guys look into RVing it is uh, a pretty cool lifestyle there's a really really great community that I I think doesn't get talked about enough you know it you go into a campground and hopefully you don't have an issue but if you do you know you're gonna find neighbors at the campground that are more than willing to help and uh, make a ton of friends along the way but thank you for your time today. I appreciate it. And uh, any feedback in the comments would be greatly appreciated, especially on the product. Absolutely. Well, again, Mike, I really appreciate you having me out here. Um, the factory got quiet right, right when we were done, done with everything. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's lunchtime, that's why. Yep. Everyone made their way to lunch. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it's a super loud, it's a super high paced facility. They're doing a lot of work in here. And quite frankly, from what you can see, they're they're, there's a focus on doing it right. There's a focus on making sure that it's it's done right at each station. They're they're bundling things, they're sealing things, they're constantly evolving, and that's all we can ask for. 
Anyways, guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again very soon.